Hello and welcome to this episode of Heart and Health. On this channel, I intend to give you some authentic information about heart diseases, their etiologies and their treatment. In today's video, we'll be talking about coronary artery diseases. So what are coronary arteries? Coronary arteries are basically the arteries which supply to the muscles of your heart. There are basically three arteries in the heart and these three arteries are left anterior descending which is also known as the widow Weigel artery, left circumflex and the right coronary artery. Together these arteries are responsible for the blood supply to most of the heart. Sometimes there may be a fourth artery which can be present which is known as ramus intermedius. These arteries along with their branches are responsible for the blood supply of most of the heart muscles. These heart vessels can be affected by some blockages which are also known as plaques. So what are these plaques? These are basically deposits of cholesterol along with some other uh, cells and uh, substances which we'll talk about in future videos. The deposition of cholesterol in your arteries, this is a progressive phenomena and this is known as atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis is a progressive disease. It can affect the arteries of your heart, it can affect the arteries of your limbs and it can also affect the arteries which supply to the brain. The manifestations of atherosclerosis can be varied. When the arteries of the heart are affected, the manifestation can be either angina or it can present as myocardial infarction, better known as heart attack. When the arteries of the brain are affected, it can lead to cerebrovascular accidents or stroke. When the arteries of the peripheral limbs are affected, it can cause peripheral arterial disease. Here we are talking about atherosclerosis in the coronary arteries. So atherosclerosis in the coronary arteries or the blockages which are seen in the coronary arteries is a relatively common phenomenon. It can either present as a stable form of disease which is Patients usually have chest pain while they are going out for some exertional activities, they are climbing stairs or they are walking uphill or they are uh, moving at fast pace and they feel some kind of chest pain which is which usually subsides after they take rest or they take sublingual tablets such as sorbitrate. This manifestation is usually indicative of some tight blockages which are present in the coronary arteries. Sometimes what happens is the arterial supply to the heart muscles is totally cut off and uh, the blood reaching to the heart muscles is absolutely zero. This is what is this this is this presents as myocardial infarction or heart attack. This is a life threatening situation. Uh, it is a bad scenario to be in. That means we are talking about percentages uh, how this many percentage patients die during the first hour. This many patients do not reach to the hospital timely. Had I been shooting this video in 2020 or before that, I would have started that now that we have uh, already conquered the communicable diseases, let's focus on the major killers of the uh, major killers such as the non-communicable diseases we have and coronary artery disease is the most common of uh, the most common killer among the non-communicable diseases. But here we are in 2022 and uh, COVID is here to stay. So still the non-communicable disease of all the non-communicable disease we are most concerned about is the, uh, is the myocardial infarction. So what causes this atherosclerosis or deposits or the blockages in the coronary arteries? So there are certain risk factors which are responsible for these blockages in the coronary arteries. Some of them are reversible and some of them are irreversible which is not in our hands. As our age increases, there are chances of progressive deposition of atherosclerotic plaque in our coronary arteries. It is said that the risk of blockages begins when we are in our teenage only and it accelerates in our late 30s. Some data has suggested that after the age of 40 years, the lifetime risk of developing coronary artery disease in males is around 49% and the lifetime risk of developing coronary artery disease after the age of 40 in females is about 32%. Besides the age, sex is an important risk factor. Males in particular have a high risk of coronary artery disease. We have been 
of late seeing males who present to us with coronary artery disease, angina and heart attack in their 30s only. Some patients have been unfortunate they have presented to us in their late 20s or mid 20s. So age is no bar as far as males are concerned but yes for premenopausal females they are naturally protected. Besides age and sex there are some diseases which accelerate the progression of atherosclerosis, hypertension and diabetes are two of them. Poorly controlled diabetes and poorly controlled blood pressure are responsible for atherosclerotic plaque deposition in your coronary arteries. Poorly controlled cholesterol that is dyslipidemia in itself is one of the most important causes of atherosclerotic deposition in your coronary arteries. In particular low uh, density lipoprotein or LDL or the bad cholesterol as you know it is responsible for atherosclerotic deposition in your coronary arteries. It has to be tightly controlled especially if you have underlying type 2 diabetes mellitus or you have previously suffered a stroke or a heart attack. Besides these alcohol and smoking have been found to be strongly correlated with the risk of coronary artery disease. Smoking in particular has been widely researched and it has been found that it can lead to premature coronary artery disease that is you can land up with your uh, you can land up with angina or a heart attack even if you are in your 20s 30s if you are be if you have been smoking so quit smoking if you are doing so and if you want to say stay if you want to stay safe from coronary artery disease alcohol is one of the subjects which has been a matter of debate uh, some studies have previously had previously some some studies had previously suggested that alcohol consumption decreases the risk of coronary artery disease but it has not been found, it has not been confirmed. Uh, what has been found for sure is that no amount and no type of alcohol is safe for Indian hearts. I am talking about Indian hearts in particular. Drug addiction in particular cocaine has also been linked to sudden onset myocardial infarction or heart attack. Besides this, physical inactivity, sedentary lifestyle, is one of the most important risk factor which is associated with coronary artery disease. Family history of coronary artery disease is one of the irreversible factors which we cannot do anything about and it is also an important cause of coronary artery disease. If your first degree relatives have got coronary artery disease, the chances of you having coronary artery disease become, become are relatively high and you should be periodically screened for the presence of coronary artery disease. Overweight and obesity are two important risk factors which are strongly linked to the presence of coronary artery disease. As the prevalence of obesity is increasing, we should be aware that what are we getting with this increasing weight. There are high chances the patient might land up into coronary artery disease or some other kind of atherosclerotic disease if the patient has, if the patient already is overweight or has obesity. When you should be suspicious about having coronary artery disease. So any kind of chest pain you've got, you should always be suspicious of having coronary artery disease. What has classically been said that the cardiac chest pain is usually central in location and it is usually accompanied by diaphoresis or sweating or restlessness or palpitations and it can sometimes radiate to left side of the, uh, it can sometimes radiate to the left arm but it is not uh, seen in 100% of the cases. So any kind of chest pain you've got, you should always suspect coronary artery disease until proven otherwise, especially if you've got any of these risk factors I have previously talked about. Most of the patients usually describe the chest pain of cardiac origin as central in location, accompanied by a sensation of heaviness. And most of the time it radiates to the left side of the arm, but it is not usually seen in most of the cases. It can relate to either arms, it may not relate to any of the arm, the chest pain or the pain may not be exactly pain, it can only be a sensation of heaviness or choking. The sensation might be present from anywhere from the nape of neck to the level of umbilicus. The possibility of having a heart disease with such kind of classical description and risk factors has to be strongly considered and uh, these patients or individuals have to be screened for the presence of heart diseases. How do we screen these patients? There are multiple tests which are available. We sometimes advise a stress test. We can go for coronary angiography. We can go for CT coronary angiography. There are multiple modalities which we can offer to investigate the presence of 
coronary artery disease in an individual and what test to choose, how to decide who is the right patient for the right test. That is something we will discuss in our uh, coming videos. So if you found this video to be useful or informative, you can always give it a thumbs up and uh, share this video and subscribe the channel. Thank you. We'll be back with more.